Thanks for joining us today. If you have shoulder pain and you want to understand your pain a bit better, I strongly recommend watching the rest of this video. And if you know someone that has shoulder pain, getting them to watch this as well. So for a, bit, a lot of the time we see patients with shoulder pain and they've had some scans and they don't really understand what's going on. And we have to give them a lot of information about what causes shoulder pain, why it's happened to them, and then what they can do about it. So today we're going to talk about the two most common causes of shoulder injuries and their pain and just a bit more of an understanding. And then on Sunday, we're going to go through some of the early stage treatments to give people with these sorts of injuries a bit of relief. So what can um, cause shoulder pain? The two most common things we see that causes shoulder pain is a rotator cuff injury or bursitis. So those two are going to be the ones that we focus on today and we might talk about some of the other ones later on in the future. So what is the rotator cuff to start off with? So there's four muscles that support the shoulder and these help the shoulder with moving, um, lifting and then also stop the shoulder from dislocating. So it pretty much protects that shoulder in the scapula. And what happens with a rotator cuff injury is that you have an injury to one of those four muscles. When you think of the shoulder today during this, I want you to think of it as a ball hanging from a roof by four strings. And those are your rotator cuff muscles. And what we're going to talk about is if you cut one of those muscles. So there's two types of rotator injuries, cuff injuries you can get. You can have an acute one, which is quick, and these require a lot of force for it to occur, especially in people under the age of 50. So the main things that we see with these um, injuries is you've had a fall, whether it's been off a bike or whether you've tripped or you've slipped on something and landed on your shoulder, or you've lifted something really heavy with your arm and that heavy resistance has caused an injury. And then you have a chronic injury to your rotator cuff. These are the people that have had a gradual onset of worsening symptoms. It's normally from a repetitive overload of the shoulder from swimming, cricket, golf, or lifting, or poor management from a previous acute injury that hasn't really gotten on top of it. In terms of what these can equate to in the shoulder muscles is there's three types of injuries that you can get from it. You can have a tendinopathy, which means that the muscle and the tendon that the muscle is attached to becomes inflamed and is aggravated. You can have a partial tear where there's a little tear sort of if you have a piece of paper and you cut halfway through. And then you can have a full thickness tear. And a full thickness tear doesn't mean that the muscle is not attached anymore. It can simply mean that if you fold a, get an A4 piece of paper and you fold it in half and you cut a line just with a, one snip and then open the piece of paper, you now have a hole in the center of the piece of paper and you can see the whole way through. And that can be what a full thickness tear is. So just because you have a full thickness tear on your scan, it doesn't mean there's nothing you can do for it. So what does a rotator cuff injury feel like? Normally people describe a dull, deep ache inside their shoulder and feels like it's part of the bone. Difficulty sleeping, difficulty grooming or reaching your back pocket, and then weakness with a movement. A lot of the time people also talk about getting a pain down to their elbow on the outside of their arm. And this is a common part of the rotator cuff injury because your muscles do go down and attach there. So even though you're coming and saying that you've got pain on the outside of your arm, down near your elbow, the physio normally will look at the shoulder as well, and that's why. A good thing though for you to just check at home is if you can still bring your arm in front of you up to shoulder height with a straight arm, then you have really good outcomes with physiotherapy with an up to 90% success rate with conservative without needing other things. So, so what is bursa? A bursa is a fluid sac. So it protects the bones from the muscles. So if we think about the bone as being a cliff face and your muscles as being a wave, what happens is eventually the waves wear away the cliff face. And that's the same thing with constant movement and constant contractions and the muscles pulling on bones, you'll eventually erode your bone. So to prevent that, the body has bursts all through the body from your toes all the way up to your neck. 
And these bursts are like your rock wall. They prevent the erosion of the bone. So rather than the muscle pulling on the bone and eroding that, it just glides across the fluid sac. So in the picture we've got here, we can see the bursa in between the muscle and the bone, and that protects it from causing any damage. So what can cause an inflammation of this bursa, which we call bursitis? The number one cause we see is poor posture. Poor posture causes an increase in force through those shoulder muscles of up to 70% with that rounded shoulder posture. With phones and computers, we start to see more of that poor posture, and that's why we're seeing an increase in bursitis. So lifting the 10 kilos with that poor posture can really mean that you're lifting 17 kilograms of force with the shoulder muscles, and that's what pushes the extra strain on the bursa so that it becomes inflamed. Posture can be corrected, though. And it's similar to running a marathon. A lot of the times we always got told to straighten up as a child by our parents, but we just didn't have the strength to be able to hold that straightened posture. So it's about building up the strength gradually through your shoulder muscles so that you have good posture and you can support that for a long period of time. You don't just go out to run a marathon. You do a five kilometers, you do a 10 kilometers, you do a half marathon, and then you'll do a 30 kilometer run before you try your marathon. And it's the same thing with posture. The other risk factor is your rotator cuff injury. So if you've got your ball hanging from the roof and you've cut one of your strings, you've then increased the force that the other three strings need to do, produce to hold the ball in the roof. And that's the same thing in your shoulder. This increased force from those muscles can cause them to get injured or inflamed, or it can cause the bursa to get inflamed. And often we'll see people that have scans that show an inflamed or injured rotator cuff and also a bursitis. So that's not something to be alarmed about and it's really common. So that's a brief history of a brief bit of information about bursitis and rotator cuff injuries. On Sunday we'll be looking at the treatment of rotator cuff and bursitis injuries, whether you should get an injection and when is it the right time to get surgery. Thank you.